Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue talking about endocannabinoids, and we're going to talk about their degradation pathways. So, Recall in the previous video, we talked about the mechanism of action of these two, which are anandamide, or AEA, and 2-AG, 2-arachidonidylglycerol. We saw that they actually act in a retrograde manner to regulate the amount of neurotransmitter release from the presynaptic neuron. So if you have these molecules in the synapse, like anything, there has to be a way to get rid of them. And they're destroyed enzymatically. So there's a couple of enzymes here. Up here we have monoacylglycerol lipase. Notice this enzyme is in the presynaptic membrane. Down here we have this enzyme, FAAH, fatty acid amidohydrolase. This is actually in the postsynaptic cell. So it turns out that 2AG is actually going to be uptaken into the presynaptic cell by passive diffusion and destroyed there whereas anandamide, AEA, is going to be taken up passively into the postsynaptic cell and destroyed there. Here's a more in-depth look at that degradation. So this is the same synapse as before. Up here we have the presynaptic cell and its membrane. Down here is the postsynaptic cell and its membrane. And we said that 2-arachidonylglycerol, 2-AG, was taken up into that presynaptic cell. Again, when I say taken up, it's really diffusing passively across the membrane. It doesn't actually require a protein for diffusion. But in any case, here you have the enzyme monoacylglycerol lipase. Now this is a membrane-bound enzyme. Uh, here it looks like we have it in the cytoplasm, but again it's membrane-bound. That's because this is a fatty acid derivative, so it's hydrophobic. It's not going to be floating free in the cytoplasm. But in any case, monoacylglycerol lipase is going to hydrolyze off the arachidonic acid. So this bond right there, this ester bond, is going to be hydrolyzed and you're going to release arachidonic acid, and then you're also going to get back glycerol, which can be reused to make phospholipids or triglycerides, depending, or other things, and arachidonic acid has functions on its own as well. Then recall that anandamide is taken up into postsynaptic cell. So again, you have a division of labor there. And anandamide is metabolized mainly by this FAAH fatty acid amidohydrolase, or just amide hydrolase. And what this enzyme does is it takes this bond right here, now it's an amide, not an ester, and it splits right here through hydrolysis. So of course one of the products is the head group ethanolamine. Ethanolamine will be reused to make more phosphatidylethanolamines, and again we get back arachidonic acid here. And that's pretty much it for endocannabinoid degradation. Really just one enzyme per each of these. Monoacylglycerol lipase for 2-AG and FAAH for anandamide. The only somewhat difficult thing to remember might be which cell the particular endocannabinoid is going up into. 2-AG is going up into the presynaptic cell, or neuron, and anandamide is going into the postsynaptic cell. And then they're metabolized there. So in the next video, we're going to start talking about a different mechanism of these endocannabinoids, and that's in their regulation of cancer cell growth. Now, we're also going to see that some exocannabinoids will also follow this pattern, but we won't be talking about those until probably the video after this. And in particular, I'm talking about CBD, cannabidiol. THC doesn't really have that function so much in anti-cancer. CBD is a lot more potent with that. But let's talk about that in the next video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.